for any n comma k linear code code word is a sequence of symbol 0 and 1 of length n. Now, for transmission of the code word onto a physical channel, we need to convert this code word vector into physical signals or waveforms. So, let us assume that we are using a radio channel and deploy BPSK modulation for the transmission of the symbols of this code word. So, each symbol would be transmitted using a sinusoidal pulse of a particular duration with say positive polarity for symbol 1 and negative polarity for symbol 0. Now, so this message code word is now converted to a sequence of sinusoidal pulse waveforms or sinusoidal pulse signals. On the channel this will get corrupted by additive white Gaussian noise as usual. Now, at the receiver assuming that all the messages are equiprobable, we will deploy minimum distance receiver. What this means that the output of the channel will pass through the match filters and sample to obtain the received vector. Now, we will choose that message signal vector for which this received vector is the closest in the Euclidean distance sense and the decision will be in favor of that message signal or message uh, signal vector. This is known as soft decision decoding. There is something what is known as hard decision decoding. So, it operates as follows. Once we get the receive vector which is the sample version of the outputs of the match filters, each component of this received vector is thresholded to convert it to, to binary symbols in our case 0 or 1 because we are restricting our discussion to binary codes. So, once you threshold each component of this receive vector, we generate what we call it as an estimate received code word. Now, this estimate received code word is compared with the code words in the code in the Hamming distance sense and the to whichever code word this estimate receive vector is closest we decide in its favor. So, this can be made more clear with the help of an example. So, let us say we have 3 comma 1 code which will consist of two code words 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 and we transmit it using BPSK with the bit energy equal to 1. So, the receive vector which is the sample outputs of the match filters is let us assume to be as given here. These are the three components of the receive vector. So, let us see what would be the decision if we use 
what is known as soft decision decoding. So, in this decoding we evaluate the Euclidean distance between this receive vector and the two message vectors or two signal vectors or two constellation points which are 1 1 1 and minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. This may be for 0 0 0 and this is for 1 1 1. These are the signals which we have transmitted. So, if we compute the, the equivalent distance, so we have the receive vector r and compute the equivalent distance with respect to 1 1 1, this is a message vector or signal vector, we take the square of that, we get this value based on the given information. And similarly, we compute the equivalent distance between the receive vector and the other message vector or the signal vector which is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 and the square of that distance turns out to be this value. So, now since this is a minimum equilibrium distance, we decide in the favor of this message vector or signal vector or indirectly we decide in the favor of the code word 0 0 0. Now, let us deploy hard decision decoding. So, in the hard decision decoding once we obtain the vector r which is the sample outputs of the match filter, this vector is first component wise detected as symbol 1 or 0 by thresholding it to 0 threshold. Assuming that the messages are equiprobable. So, if we do that, this value 0 0.5, 0 0.5, minus 3 would be converted, this would be converted to 1, 1, and 0. So, whenever component is greater than or equal to 0, we decide in the favor of 1 and when it is less than 0, we decide in the favor of 0. So, this is what it shows. I get this is my estimate of the received code word and now we compute the Hamming distance between this received code word and the message code word 1 1 1 and we get to be equal to 1 because it differs only in one place. And similarly, we compute the Hamming distance between the res estimate receive code word and the code word in the code which is 0 0 0 and we find that it differs in two positions. So, the Hamming distance is 2. So, in this case we decide that the message transmitted was 1 1 1. So, we see that in this case the decision is different than what we got earlier, but important to note that soft decision decoding is the optimum de detection and it achieves a lower probability of error. Now, we can show that uh, in practice the difference between the soft decision decoding and hard decision decoding may not be very significant and it is easy to implement the hard decision decoding. So, in our discussions we will assume that we are using hard decision decoding. Now, let us try to understand the error detection and error correction properties of a particular n comma k linear code. Now, if we have n comma k linear code, what it implies that the 
code word is binary code word and it has a length of n. Now, this implies that there are totally 2 raised to n code words or vertices of an n dimensional hypercube which is available to assign to 2 raised to k messages. Each of this 2 raised to k messages is k tuples. So, now let us assume that it is desired that this code is able to correct up to E c wrong bits. So, what this implies is as follows that if I transmit message say m j using a code word u j then due to channel errors u j gets mapped to another n tuple let us call it say u tilt j in the vector space of n tuples. So, if the channel noise causes error in E c of fewer bits, then your received u tilt j n tuple will lie somewhere inside the Hamming sphere of radius E c which is centered at the code word u j. Please remember that this Hamming sphere is not in the geometrical sense hypersphere because your Hamming distance is also not a geometric distance. So, now if the code is to correct up to E c errors then the code must have the property that all the Hamming spheres of radius E c centered at the code words are non overlapping. Okay. So, what this means that vertices within a Hamming distance E c from any code word must not be another code word. So, this implies that a received u tilde j which is n tuples if it lies with a Hamming sphere of radius E c centered at u j that is the code word then it is decoded as the code word u j. So, this will be very clear in the figure given here. So, for explanation I have taken two code words u 1 and u 2 which have the minimum distance in this code. So, there are two cases have been considered where d minimum is odd. So, you can check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, d minimum here is 5 whereas, here d minimum is 6. So, d minimum is E 1. So, as shown here each code word u 1 and u 2 here around this there is a Hamming sphere of radius E c this is what is being showed where E c denotes the number of correctable errors. So, similarly it is shown here. Now, as long as these spheres are disjoint the code is capable of correcting E c errors. So, a little thinking shows that the condition for non overlapping spheres for these two cases is given here. So, when it is odd this condition should be satisfied 2 E c plus 1 should be equal to d minimum and here 2 E c plus 2 should be equal to d minimum correct. Because this cannot be included because if it is here then we do not know whether it is coming from u 2 or it is coming from u 1 there will be ambiguity. So, using this two relationship we can solve it as follows. 
So, E c becomes equal to what is shown in the right hand side here for d minimum odd and d minimum even. Now, from here we can summarize that this is equivalent to E c being the lower floor of d minimum minus 1 by 2. What I mean by this is that lower flow of a quantity x is the largest integer which does not exceed x. So, using this definition you see that we can find out the error correcting capability of the code if I know the d minimum of the code. In some cases we are interested in decoding procedures that can detect errors, but not correct the errors. For example, this could happen if I have a communication link from the receiver to the transmitter. So, if the receiver detects an error, it communicates via reverse channel to the transmitter that there is an error, so retransmit it. So, in this case, I am not interested in correcting the errors, but only detecting the error. So, in that case we could use this figure to explain the same. So, now here you look I have again two code words which are separated by this d minimum. Without loss of generality we have called this u 1 and u 2 it could be any two code words which has that minimum distance. So, here if we denote the error detection capability of the code by E d, then obviously in the absence of error correction E d is equal to d minimum minus 1, because if d minimum minus 1 that is E d of fewer errors occur, the transmitted code word will be converted to a non code word sequence. And therefore, an error is detected. So, in this case we will get our E d to be equal to d minimum minus 1. Now, if you are interested in both error correction and error detection as shown in this figure. Now, here we are interested in error correction up to E c. So, we draw the Hamming spheres of radius E c around this two code words as the centers and then we are interested in error detection as E d. So, in this case the error detection can happen up to this point if I assume that I have transmitted u 2 without loss of generality. So, now from this figure it is very clear that E c plus E d should be equal to d minimum minus 1 with the condition that E c is less than or equal to E d correct. So, we get all the characteristics of the error correction or detection of the code by knowing the d minimum of the code. So, now let us see whether there is any relationship between the values n, k and the error correcting capability of a code. In the sense we would like to find out that if we are interested in correcting errors up to certain number of bits, then what kind of relationship should hold between this n k and the error correcting capability and we will try to find the answer to that. So, assume that we have n comma k linear code. So, what this implies is that we have 2 raise to n vertices available for 2 raise to k messages correct and 2 raise to n minus 2 raise to k are redundant vertices which we have not used in the vector space of n tuples. So, the question is now how many vertices 
can lie within a hemming sphere of radius EC, which is the desired error correcting capability of my n comma k code. Correct? So, now number of n tuples that differ from a given n tuple that is a sequence of length n by j bits is the number of possible combinations of n things taken j at a time and this is given by n c j. So, therefore, the number of ways in which up to E c errors can occur is given by the summation of this expression. Correct? So, n c j, j could be from 1 up to E c. So, you form all the combinations with 1 error, 2 error, 3 errors up to the correctable desired error which is E c. So, what this implies that for each code word we must have this many number of vertices which cannot be used. So, now there are 2 raise to k code words. So, what this implies that we must have a total of 2 raise to k multiplied by this quantity vertices unused for 2 raise to k code words. So, from this we can conclude that the total number of n tuples must be such that it should be at least equal to this quantity given here. So, for each code word I cannot use this many number of vertices because so many vertices would be lying in the hemming sphere of radius E c. There are 2 raise to k code words. So, so many number of vertices cannot be used for all the 2 raise to k code words and we also have to have 2 raise to k code words. So, the total number of n tuples must be at least this quantity. Now, this can be written as here. Now, we know that the total number of n tuples or vertices which is available in a vector space of n tuple is equal to 2 raise to n. So, from this we conclude that 2 raise to n this quantity the num total number which is available should be larger or equal to this quantity and from this we get this inequality which is known as Hamming bound. So, this Hamming bound has to be satisfied if I want to get error correction up to E c wrong bits. Now, there are some codes for which this inequality would become equal equality. So, what this implies is follows this is known as a perfect code and in a such a code the Hamming spheres about all the code words not only are non overlapping, but they exhaust all the 2 raise to n vertices leaving no vertex outside some sphere. Correct? And example of a perfect code is the Hamming code which are binary single error correcting codes. So, the Hamming codes which are systematic linear codes and they are perfect code have the following property. So, it is a class of linear block codes which satisfies this equalities n is equal to 2 raise to m minus 1 k is given by this expression and d minimum for all the Hamming code is equal to 3 what this implies that uh, its error correcting capability 
is just equal to 1. So this is single error correction only possible and to get the Hamming code it we can easily form what is known as parity uh, check matrix and this consists of all binary sequences of length m except the all 0 sequence and the code rate for this which is defined as k by n is given by this relationship which is obtained from here. So, and this tends to 1 for large m. Right? So, we want in practice the code rate to be high, but the, the disadvantage is that it has only single error correction capability. So, let us just take one popular Hamming code which is 7 comma 4 Hamming code for which uh, if you substitute this value 7 4 into this uh, requirement for the perfect code, we see that it satisfies and uh, the, the systematic form of the parity check matrix is as shown here. So, we have used there are 7 columns out here except for the 0 sequence of 3 tuple all other sequence of 3 tuples have been used to form this parity check matrix. So, once we know this I know my parity array from this because this corresponds to the identity matrix we are assuming systematic form. So, from this we can get a generator matrix as follows. So, a code could have error correcting capability or just error detecting capability or both. Now, error detection decoding is quite simple. The received code word is multiplied by the transpose of the parity check matrix to obtain the syndrome and if the syndrome is non-zero this implies that the received code word is non code word. So, in this case the receiver via the reverse communication channel informs the transmitter for retransmission. But how do you achieve error correction decoding? We will try to find an answer to this question next time. Thank you.